So we're through to question five, which is suggested time 25 minutes. I'm not intending to spend the full length of time. Students are collecting data about the amount of water needed to fill different sized paper cones. Measurements are compared to a calculated volume. The formula, volume equals one third pi r squared h. So there's maths in here. The program subprogram been started to carry out the calculation. Open question 05, save amended code as five finished. So as we've done previously, I'm going to do that. Question five. And immediately I'm going to save as five finished. Amend the program and subprogram to meet the following requirements. The subprogram must work for any values of radius and height passed as parameters. You can assume values passed the subprogram will always be numbers. No validation is required. The subprogram must calculate the volume based on the input parameters. The main program must print the volume formatted to show three decimal places. Do not add any functionality. Save your code to 05 finished. So I'm going to look over at the code, hard coded for testing, cone height, base radius, cone volume. So here's our sub program, calc volume, print the radius is, the height is, complete calculation for the volume. Okay, that's that's for us to do. Uh, return the volume to the corner, so we need to do a return so that this subprogram is working as a function. And then we're going to call the subprogram passing parameters and catch a return value in the correct variable. So import a library to use pi. So this is an interesting one. Import a library to use pi. So I'm going to have a little look at this, import the library to use pi. Now, students will be familiar with pi from their maths, but in terms of programming, if they look at their, if they look at the uh, programming language subset document, which I've opened up here, it talks about the math module. Import the math module. Supported functionality is as follows. Math.py. So there's a requirement to import the math module. And then the students should know and be able to refer to this that by uh, calling the math module dot pi, they'll get the, the value of pi for using in their calculations. So that's, that's an important element of why the programming subset, programming language subset document is an important reference. Uh, we're not expecting or requiring them to remember these uh, library calls, but to understand how they work, and then they can look it up and find them in here. And there wouldn't have been a requirement in here for pi had it not been existing in the uh, PLS. So that's a very good uh, point to make here. So let's get back to the question. So I'm going to start with uh, completing the calculation. And I can see here that the volume is the uh, the variable that I'm going to put it into. So the volume is where I'm going to start equals. So uh, we're going to start off with one divided by three. I'm going to multiply that by C 
so we're going to multiply uh, the radius twice and we can see that p radius now there is a math dot power library uh, function that could be used uh, it's not in the uh, pls so um, I'm not I'm avoiding it at the moment and doing it in p radius by p radius Okay, so uh, that, that's my calculation done. I need to uh, pull these um, uh, parameters in here as well. So I'm going to do P radius, comma, P height. So these are the parameters passed into the function. So they're going to come in as p radius p height. It's going to print out a uh, summary of what I've put in. Then it's going to do the calculation. Then it's going to print the calculation. Then importantly, we need to return the volume. So we're getting there. So here we can do, uh, we see the clue here that uh, cone volume, cone volume equals, and we're going to call the function calc volume, and we're going to pass in the base radius and cone height. Base radius, oh dear. Cone height. So cone volume is going to be calc volume passing in base radius and cone height, base radius, cone height, radius height, radius height. And then we're going to do the, uh, the formatting of the print. Uh, so we're going to do curly brackets, going to be colon dot three float. I'm going to pull that back just to make it look tidy. Colon dot three f. So I think that's it. Let, let's try running um, tools Python. So this is saying. Radius is 1.2, base P radius, that's good. Height is 10.7, cone height 10.7, height is P height 10.7. The volume is 16 point. So here with the print, there's no formatting. So we're getting all of the uh, decimal places. And then we're getting print 16.135. So I think that might be everything that's required. Let's go read very carefully. Do not add any other functionality. So I think that's question five done. So we're going to have a look at the question five mark scheme. We've got, again, the assessment objectives uh, 
coded here by color. Import math library, get a mark for that. So this, this mark uh, grid, by the way, is uh, a mixture of points and then uh, level based, but just functionality. So you've only got the one uh, element of level based here for functionality. And then the marks are given a uh, point by point basis. Um, and as you come down, there's also some example code. And there are three examples of perfectly reasonable ways that the uh, calculation be, can be done. I, I, I took the simplistic one at the bottom. The one at the top requires a use of the math.pow, which isn't at the moment in the PLS, but could be something that students are shown if they're comfortable working with it. And that would be a perfectly reasonable example of something outside of the scope of the PLS where the student would, if they correctly use it, uh, get all the credit for it. And then in terms of functionality, uh, does it are all the outputs accurate? Does it respond predictably? Is the solution robust within the constraints of the problem? So this solution here would get full marks for that. And that's question five.